Hello everyone and welcome back. So what's on tap for today? Well, we've got another great video clip. It's from Campus Reform and their intrepid reporter going around to universities and college campuses all over America and asking these woke social justice warrior students questions. And boy, the answers we get are unbelievable. This time he's asking, hey, did you know that these were quotes from President Trump's various State of the Union addresses, but what the students don't know is they were not made by Donald Trump. These were made by other Democrats like Joe Biden and Obama and Warren and Chuck Schumer and others. We're going to get to all of that in the next few seconds, folks, but before we do, we just want to let you know that you're watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I'm your guest host for today. My name is Dr. Nasser. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us, hit that notification bell, let us know what you think in the comments below, watch our other reaction videos as well. Let's get to this video right now. I told you all these quotes are actually 2020 Democratic candidates quotes. Oh. I'm Kevin Phillips with Campus Reform. This week, President Trump is giving his fourth State of the Union address. I'm in Washington, D.C., getting college students' opinions on quotes from that address. But what they don't know is that all the quotes are actually from 2020 Democratic candidates for president. Will that change their mind? Let's find out. The White House released a, an early transcript of the State of the Union. Going to get your reaction to a few of the more controversial quotes. Okay. Talking to black voters, trying to win their support, saying, quote, the other side is going to put y'all back in chains. Uh, what do you think of that one? That's inappropriate. That should not be spoken like that. <laughs> I mean, I think that's just flat out racist. No, nah, that's pretty horrendous. We should get a new president, probably. We okay. shouldn't have like someone like that as like a role model for kids. I don't think anyone is trying to do that. Talking about North Korea, this administration's success will be judged on whether we can eliminate North Korea's nuclear weapons and verify they're gone once and for all. Well, um, that sounds very threatening, um, as if we're going to be executing him completely. And it's warmongering, and I also think that there's other things to focus on with North Korea than just nuclear weapons. I think it would be warmongering, but also it's just like a part of his rhetoric to like assert dominance and like assert American exceptionalism, things like that. So that's his job. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, he's just asserting American dominance. He's just talking about American exceptionalism. What the hell else do you expect from the president of the United States? Unbelievable. It doesn't really surprise me that he says something like that. Knowing him, he's very like irrational. And yeah. I'd say slightly inaccurate. Next up, talking about inner city violence and gun violence, saying, quote, those kids think they're going to get killed anyway because all their friends are getting killed. They just don't have any long-term focus or anything. It's a joke to have a gun. It's a joke to pull the trigger to them. Yeah, so, I mean, he's saying that because these are communities of people of color. It's just, it's not even, it's not even veiled racism. It's just racism. That's flat out ridiculous and very just not appropriate language, I feel like. Oh, oh what? <laughs> I think that's pretty um, unrealistic. To kind of put all the blame for gun violence on those kids and not the people who are manufacturing them and the people who are selling them is uh, an issue in and of itself. I feel like that's really belittling to the people in those uh, areas to say, oh, they don't care when there are many people who are trying to better their situation. Next up, talking about Israel-Palestine, obviously hot button issue for a lot of people. Quote, uh, when Palestine and Hamas put rocket launchers next to hospitals and schools, they're using civilians to protect their military. I believe Israel has a right at that point to defend itself. What's your take? Uh, I think he needs to use more peaceful language, and I think it needs to be taken care of in a more peaceful, diplomatic way. I'm very pacifist, so I really don't support war, so I don't support any of that at all. Using that kind of language is very charged. He has his real messed up. I mean, and, and a lot of people do, but him especially. I mean, Israel isn't the one that we should be backing at all. What if I told you all these quotes are actually 2020 Democratic candidates quotes? Oh, I would believe you. <laughs> they are. Interesting. Is that surprising? Uh, mm, yeah. These are actually all quotes from Democratic candidates in oh, 2020. Oh, interesting. What do you think of that? Um, I don't know. What if I told you these are actually all quotes from Joe Biden, Elizabeth oh, Warren, really? and other Democrat candidates? Who said the, who said the, um, the chains one? Joe Biden. Joe Biden said that. Yeah. 
I did not know that they said that. The in chains one, uh, it makes more sense in that context now. Um, and whoever said that, like that is uh, concerning and not something so Joe I Biden. agree with. Not shocking. <laughs> Are you surprised by that, by the quotes? What's your take on that? Yeah. I think that um, everybody kind of, every, I feel like everyone's a hypocrite at some point a little bit. We label like who has these thoughts and like, if you're a Democrat, you should think this way. And like, if you're a Republican, you think a certain way. Um, but I think sometimes there are overlapping beliefs that we kind of overlook. But I think that initially I'm like, oh, he said it. Like, let me find something bad about it. So yeah, I think that is fair. Twitter informs a lot of my political decisions. I mean, Twitter informs a lot of my decisions, period. Twitter is great. I love Twitter, but it's definitely radicalized me to the left a lot more than I think that I would. I mean, it's all stuff that we kind of associate with the other side, at least. From my understanding, again, the school is mostly liberal. Yeah, I think often some people would look at what you just said and say, like, oh, my candidate didn't say that, or, you know, like, they would never have done that in the past. But I think that, like, everyone's opinions change, and, like, everybody says questionable things now and then, and I think that um, it's beneficial to accept that. I think people are very like, okay, if it's what this person is saying, I'm gonna find a way to make it bad. And if it's someone that I want to support, then maybe I can find a way to make it sound good. Oh, well. That's basically what that girl just said right here towards the very end. <laughs> that makes, you know, some sense that I think that's called spin. That's what we call spin. Somebody on your side says something that you like, go for it. Someone says something on that, that, that you support and you're maybe not for it or they stepped in it, so to speak, and you're trying to basically, you know, dig them out of a hole or whatever. So you start spinning. We all do that. That's just political. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's just the reality of political debate and political thought and political speech. All right. If you didn't have spin, you probably wouldn't have a bunch of people in politics because you need that. You need the spin meisters that are out there. Now, there's a difference, I think, between spin and outright lying and spin and outright stupidity. Now, these kids, obviously, these students, woke, social justice warriors, I think each and every one of them, and like that young uh, man said that, you know, he gets most of his stuff from Twitter and that Twitter, Twitter has probably radicalized him to the left. So you can just see that when he's listening to Twitter on that on the leftist side, he didn't even know about these quotes that were being made and put y'all back in chains by Joe Biden. I mean, that's been all over the place. Where have these kids been? Where have they been? I mean, when nowadays you can just look anything up, but to go immediately right to the fact and say right to their you know their thought of what the fact is that hey this is what trump said without any saying you know what are you sure about that i mean somebody asked me the question is that really show it to me or i need to see it for myself they just answered it right away on the spot not even questioning it at all and when confronted about it it was like oh, oh okay all right hmm you know, whatever. Huh. Everybody does it. We're all hypocrites to some degree. Anyways, we hope you enjoyed all that, folks. It's eye-opening, though, isn't it? These are young kids, but like I said, these, they're at leftist, liberal, socialist, Marxist institutions, and they are absolutely, for four years of their lives, or, you know, four years or more of their lives, these students, our children, you know, they're getting indoctrinated into the ways that are completely left of center, you know, way left of center. And um, I really don't know what the answer to that is. The only different, the only thing we need to do is, as parents, grandparents, um, you know, guardians of our children, if you're conservative, if you're America first, you need to instill those conservative values at an early age. And I mean, right when they're born, folks, put a flag in the crib and a picture of Donald Trump right next to him in the crib. 
you know, the mobile with a bunch of Trump stuff up there, baby. <laughs> and the United States first. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your guest host. My name is Dr. Nasser. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you already already done so. Hit that like button. Hit that notification bell. And I'll leave you with my final thought, which is, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. We'll see you again next time, folks. Take care and stay safe.